Davis Daniel joins us for a two-part conversation about his life, his career, and what goes through his mind when he's on the mound. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Angel content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe to become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel and right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Thanks for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, aka the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, we're very thrilled to have Davis Daniel, Angels pitcher, who Came up for a few games at the end of last season, but he's been working his way back through rehabbing, through injury, and then he came up for three games, and he looked really good, Mike. We were actually really impressed with him when he did come up, and he even earned his first win at the end of the season against the Oakland A's, and so we had a a great conversation with him. Here's how it's going to go down. We've got two parts, actually, so we'll have part of our interview with Davis today and tomorrow, Tuesday's show, But at the end of each show, we kind of want to get into a conversation about some of the stuff he shared and really how it impacts us as fans and and how it gets us excited for, you know, what the team looks like in 2024. So we'll have a little conversation at the end of today's episode and tomorrow's episode. So we hope you'll stick around for that. But right now, let's get to that interview with Davis Daniel. Well, hey, we're happy to welcome Davis Daniel, pitcher for the Los Angeles Angels. Davis, thanks for being here with us, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Uh, we're so excited to get to chat with you, and uh, congratulations. We found out on Wednesday that you were named to the All-AFL team. Uh, you tore it up down in Arizona, man. How about that? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, felt good, you know, getting some full starts in and um, get some extra innings. So, uh, you know, it was a good, good time. And you impressed along the way, too. That's that's the uh, that's the important part, man. You, like I said, you tore it up down there uh, with 1.89 ERA. Uh, sub sub one whip like let's go (laughs) it's feeling good it's feeling good love it hey davis would you tell us a little bit about young davis tell us how you got involved in baseball how this all came about yeah uh i mean having an older brother um you know and and my dad played sports all growing up so you know sports just kind of ran in my family my dad went to unc so we watched a lot of college basketball growing up and um, you know, that when I was young, they were really good at college baseball and we were big Braves fans. And so we were just always kind of around sports and athletics in general. And then, uh, you know, playing T-ball and everything else, I played, you know, a lot of sports all the way through middle school. And then, um, in high school really started to focus more on baseball, but, um, you know, I, I loved the game of baseball from a very young age. I have a picture of me when I was like, I think it was my second or third birthday. All I wanted was a full baseball uniform. So... <laughs> Got a boy. Been been loving the game ever since I can remember. Davis, talk about uh, when you say the Braves. Who is it that comes to mind? Because you're a young kid watching the Braves. When I say the Atlanta Braves, what player comes to mind for you? Yeah, I mean, I think you know the the couple biggest ones for me were like Chipper Jones as a kid. Awesome. Um, eventually, like a guy like Tim Hudson, especially um, going to Auburn and and being around him. Some, you know, he was a guy that as a kid that I really looked up to. So. You mentioned in high school, you know, you really started focusing on baseball. Is about is that about the time that you were like, "Hey, I think I could do this. Like, I want to go to the majors." When did that happen for you? Um, I mean, yes and no. I think you know, I, I was a, a good player, but I was always a little undersized and um, not the biggest biggest guy. And so I just, um, you know, I knew it was what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I had the talent at that point to really move on, but I knew that baseball gave me my best shot Mm. and um so i knew at that point that that that's what i wanted to focus on i was not the biggest fan of school and and was like man i don't want to go sit behind a desk all day like (laughs) i want to pursue 
you know, something that I love. And um, so, you know, ninth grade was really kind of when I dove into it and decided like, this is the route that I want to take. When did it hit you? When did it become a reality? Like, wow, I'm going to make it to the majors. I'm here. I've arrived. Was it when you got there or did you have kind of a thought in college? Hey, I'm on my way. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I had been told a few times in high school and college that, you know, I was going to have a chance to play pro ball probably, but, um, it didn't really hit me that I was, I was going to be, you know, a, a major league pitcher until I got the call. And, you know, the first time I got the call was, um, two seasons ago. Uh, it was actually on my birthday and, uh, at like 2 AM got a call and, you know, flew and met the team. And even though I didn't get a chance to debut and, um, you know, it was kind of a long time coming before I got a chance to, to have that debut. I think, you know, that moment really kind of opened my eyes like, okay, I'm, I'm good enough to be here. Um, and I think that's kind of when everything really kicked in. You got to debut at home, which was awesome, especially like as fans of the Angels. It's always fun to see somebody new debut at home. And it was against Cleveland and you struck out Gabriel Arias. Tell me, how did that strikeout feel? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I think uh, we went fastball elevated with two strikes to get him. And, um, you know, the, the fastball up's kind of been my bread and butter through the minor leagues. So, um, you know, it's it's nice to, to A, get it with, you know, my best pitch, but but also in a moment with all the adrenaline, just to be able to rear back and throw it as hard as you could, man. It, it was it was a lot of fun. And uh, I think it took me a, a little while to get that first one, a couple of hitters. So kind of gave, you know, deep breath and settle in like, okay, now we don't have to chase that anymore. We can just go out and execute. I was watching highlights of, of the three games you got into this season. And I was impressed with just the way that you were able to get around the fact that like, you know, there were runners in scoring position. I think you got out of two jams against Cleveland, but uh, right. what, what kind of, what does that pressure feel like? Cause Mike and I, we're just a couple of nerds who love baseball. So <laughs> we want to hear from you. Like what's it like to be under that pressure and then get out of that jam? Yeah, I think that, you know, being a minor league starter and, and kind of being a starter my whole career, it kind of gets to a point where, you know, it, and I think I ran into some of that trouble in my earlier innings typically. And it was I was able to really think about, you know, I've, I've got to go out here and pitch a few more innings. Like I can't afford to, to think too much about these guys that are on in scoring position right now. You know, if, if I got to stay on the attack and if a guy hits a sack fly or a ground ball to score a run right here, like, that's okay at the end of the day, like we've got to stay on the attack and, and continue to pitch a few more innings. So I think that kind of mindset throughout my whole career made me get me to the point where like, I'm used to pitching with guys in scoring position. Mm. And I'm used to not overthinking it. Um, so I think that kind of allowed me to stay as calm as possible in a situation like that when I'm, you know, obviously debuting and trying not to give up runs. But um, I think just running into those situations all the time throughout my career has really helped me like, remain calm in that situation, I guess. What was it like to uh, be on the mound at the big A in that game? Like you said, you got the call up last year, but didn't get a chance to debut. So what was that whole experience like, like coming in, knowing that you're, you're going to get a chance to pitch? Yeah, it was awesome. I think, you know, this, this time getting called up, I, I had a much better idea that I was going to get to pitch. Um, yeah. I was told, was told beforehand. And so, um, you know, showing up to the park that day, knowing that I was probably going to pitch um, was a, a very nice feeling. It was more of the feeling that I was used to of like, you know, knowing I was starting that day or knowing I was coming in, like, um, you know, go through my normal routine all the way from the time that I wake up to, you know, when I eat, when I shower, when I go to the field, like being able to do everything as normal was, was very nice. Um, I'm very routine based. So I think that that stuff was was good for me you know to to be able to settle in and have a good few outings how important is routine mindset and then skill like if you had to give a percentage on each do they all work together hand in glove or in your mind as a pitcher what what would you say is like one two and three on the list yeah i mean i think once you get to this level everybody's got skill um, mm. everybody in professional baseball has the skills and the tools to to you know maybe not like the, the difference in the, in the top, top and in, in the mid tier. But as far as everybody, like you have talent across the board. I think that, you know, guys that figure out their routine and figure out their, their schedules and figure out, um, you know, just how to go about their business. I think those are the guys that typically have a better chance of making it um, mm. and, and, and eventually staying there. I think, you know, you look around the league there, there's very few guys 
that have played a long time in this game that don't have their set routine or their set schedule or their set, you know, whether it's working out in the off season or their routines in between starts, like all that stuff, those guys have pretty much mapped out um, and they're all doing it at a very high level. Um, so I think that those things definitely, um, I think the skill is definitely important. You know, you have to have that in order to get there, but the other stuff uh, is a key contributor to, to getting there and staying for sure. Locked on Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers like you can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And it's the holiday season. Who doesn't need a little extra money? So you just bet $5, put it on the money line, and you can win $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, today's a, a really great day to do that. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, and you can get involved in the NFL season right now. FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. This is Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. Hey, Locked On Everydayers, just so you know, Locked On Podcast Network has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On. Plus, all the national shows are on there as well. Locked on NFL, Locked on MLB, Locked on NHL, all that stuff is there for you. You need to go and subscribe to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube to the first ever sports 24-7 streaming channel. When you heard that you were going to be on the mound and you were going to start, was there a combination of nerves and excitement? Or were you just like, finally, I get to do what I've wanted to do my entire life? A little bit of both. I think, uh, you know, I was I was definitely excited and nervous. But at the same time, it was like, you know, I, I've been in this clubhouse. I know where the stadium is. I know where the bullpen is. I, I've spent a couple days here. You know, being around the guys, like at this point, I'm just ready to to get out there and pitch. So I think uh, I would say mostly like relief that it was finally hmm. happening, especially coming off of an injury. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, give us give us a description of the type of pitcher you are uh, in as many words as it takes. But but how do you see yourself? How do you view yourself? Uh, how do you consider yourself as a pitcher? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people would look and say that, you know, I, I don't throw the hardest or I don't have, um, you know, the best slider curveball on metric wise as some of these guys. But, um, you know, I think my confidence and ability to locate pitches and and throw every pitch for a strike, I think, is, is a big tool for me. I think that um, having the four pitch mix and being able to throw them to righties or lefties, I think that that's kind of the big separator for me as, as well as having um, some characteristics in my fastball that, that make it above average. I think my fastball plays up and that's kind of the bread and butter that's got me from college all the way to the big leagues. And it's something that, you know, I'm going to continue to have to rely on to, to get me in and out of big situations. Um, and then let the other stuff play off of it. I got to say, I enjoyed, I believe it was a strikeout to Brent Rooker and I was looking back at it and just the uh, the sequencing that you had, uh, you had two strikes on him, and then you're pounding the zone, and he's fouling, fouling, fouling off, and then you you toss that curveball in there, seventh pitch, and you know big old swing and a miss, and I was like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> like I was, I don't even know if this is a question, but I was just impressed with like the sequencing, and you you had the know how to be like, hey, this guy he's fouling off everything. If I can slow it down and get him to swing and miss, I'm out of it. How, how does that feel when you can kind of you know, play chess with a hitter like that. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's uh, that's a great sequence. I remember that one. It's funny you actually mentioned that one because that was kind of the moment for me that I realized that my curveball was better this season. Mm. Uh, I think in college it was a pitch that I threw a lot. And then as I went through pro ball, it was kind of, you know, metric wise or, or whatever. It wasn't as good as my slider. So I kind of ran away from it. Um, and then – building back up this season it was like i was doing these rehab starts in low a and i was fastball slider had a lot of success and i remember that specific at bat facing rooker and throwing the curveball and being like man like that one felt really good and, I, <laughs> and, 
and it and it seemed to play off my fastball really good like it used to yeah and so at that point like i started throwing more curveballs if you look pretty much after that at bat the rest of that season i started throwing um, a lot more curveballs and then i carried that into afl and i had a lot of success with it um and so it's funny you mentioned that at bat because i mean it, it did it was like wow like you know that that worked pretty good there against a very high caliber player like that's something i should probably utilize yeah for for his season man i mean he was he was tearing it up for the a's this season yeah. as down on their luck as they've been like he was a a bright spot for them um, yeah. let's let's talk about the afl a little bit and i got your stats here again super impressive four starts one and oh 19 innings pitched four earnings five walks 25 Ks, my man, uh, a 1.89 ERA and a 0.789 whip. Very impressive. What's it like going down there, having that experience, trying to get some extra innings in and, and how do you feel walking away from it, knowing that you were named to the, uh, the all AFL team? Uh, coming off of injury, I think that it was something that, uh, you know, I, I needed to do, I needed to throw some extra innings. I needed to continue to build off of the stuff that I was doing at the end of the year, because, um, you know, typically, you know, you, you have a spring training and then after spring training, you're hitting that two, three month period where you really start to, to hit your groove and hopefully carry that through the end of the year. And I felt like I was kind of hitting my groove, like right at the end of the season. So it was nice to be able to, to go and throw some extra innings. Um, you know, I, I think the, the biggest thing for me down there was to pound the zone and, and mm-hmm. be on the attack. Um, I think, uh, I had a lot of success. I think, you know, even of the like five walks I had, like two or three of them were, you know, eight, nine pitch at bats. Like it wasn't, you know, there was, I think I, my debut, the first hitter I faced, I think, or second hitter I faced was a four pitch walk. It was just kind of, that's, I ran into some of that at, in in the big leagues this year. So I knew that that was a big goal for me was to get back to who I am and pounding the strike zone. Um, and then obviously, you know, that transitioned into a, a pretty good month or so of, of pitching and, um, you know, felt really good doing it. Absolutely. Do you know going into like this, this opportunity, do you know going in what it is that you need to work on? Or do you really rely on the coaches with the angels and the coaches with the teams that you're going to be a part of to identify some things for you? Yeah, I think a little bit of both. I mean, I think the main goal for me was just to get innings. I think um, based on where I was and based on the chance to continue to be a starter and throw a hundred plus innings a year, like I needed to, to get to that next threshold of innings. Um, So for me, that was the main goal, obviously. I think that the stuff and everything else just needed more consistency, and that just came along with um, throwing more. I think Um, I've I've showed it in the past couple years in the minor leagues that if I I get to a certain number of innings, like eventually I'm going to – the stuff is going to be what it is, and I'm going to start to um, hone that in. So I think I just needed to reach that next threshold threshold and continue to improve – on that stuff. Johnny and I've been fans of the angels since we were little. And it's been interesting to, to hear the narrative about the minor leagues for the angels and the developmental system and things like that. The, the funny thing is you just, that system will get ranked really low, but then you have incredible players like a Zach Neto and a Logan O'Hoppy and a Mickey Moniak coming out of there that make a huge impact. You are included in that. Right. And so what's it like to be in that system and, and tell us your perspective of how it's helped you and where you've seen it really help you to be a better major league baseball player. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, my first full season um, for me was in 21 after being drafted in 2019. And I spent all of 19 with um, coming back from a surgery and then 20 obviously was canceled. Yeah. Um, so kind of, it was kind of a weird start to my career by, you know, being older and, more removed from college and everything else. I think going into it in 2021, like I, I knew it was like sink or swim, you know? And, and so there was a lot of that in the whole organization, a lot of guys that shot up or a lot of guys that, you know, unfortunately sank and got released or, or whatnot. And so I think that um, that extra like motivation, I guess you would say, like really kind of pushed me Um to hone in everything in and take advantage of all the opportunities that I had with, Hmm. you know, whether that was technology or coaching or whatever, I think going across three levels that first full season and really, you know, a interacting with a lot of different pitching coaches and coaches and getting feedback from a lot of different hitters and throwing to, you know, eight different catchers and 
I think just a combination of all of that stuff really um, made me a much better pitcher. I think that uh, it definitely led to a few hiccups and struggles throughout the season, but it also helped me figure out who I was as a pitcher better than any other way that I can think. You mentioned the catcher and throwing to different catchers. Is is that really important to know your catcher? Like what what type of relationship do you need to have with somebody and having a consistent person back there? Like we've we've heard the story as fans, like this is his personal catcher. He really likes this person when he's throwing. And so d- does that matter, Davis? Or are we just uh, fans that are just nerding out and trying to make up something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely think it matters. I think, uh, you know, not to say that, not like throwing to a guy that you aren't comfortable with or used to, like is necessarily going to mean you're going to pitch bad. It just makes it much easier when it's a guy that you do have that track record with and you do, he knows what kind of pitches you like to throw in certain counts or, or what direction you like to go on certain things. I think it goes a, a very long way. Um, and it, and it was really nice for me to throw to guys that like, mm, because sometimes those guys know more about your stuff than you do, you know, like, <laughs> like sometimes those guys will be back there and you'll shake to something and give up a, a base hit. And then you come in the dugout and they're like, what were you thinking? And you're like, <laughs> and you're, and you're kind of able to like talk through it as like, you know, well, I was thinking this and they're like, well, if you really look at this or, you know, what the hitter did the pitch before, like you should know that this would be, have been a better option or vice um, versa. And so I think that, you know, just, building that repertoire with a, with a certain catcher really helps because it makes everyone more comfortable to have those conversations. If you know each other, than if you're first time catching somebody or throwing to somebody, he comes up to you in the dugout and was like, Hey, what were you thinking? Yeah. You know what I mean? It just makes that relationship much easier if it's somebody that you've done it with before. So what do you prefer? Do you prefer calling your own game or having the catcher do that? Or is it a combination of both for you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a combination of both. I, I I like to have control of what's coming next because at the end of the day, I want to throw it with intent and I want to be sure that that's what I want to throw. Um, typically, I grip the pitch that I want to throw in my glove before I even get a sign. Mm. Um, so for me, that was, you know, I, I want to, you know, sometimes I'll see their fingers and I'll be like, oh, you know what, you're actually right. And I'll, you know, adapt or change. But for the most part, like in my head, I'm I'm set on a pitch and I want to throw it. Um, I think that once I got to the big leagues, that changed a little bit knowing, you know, that these catchers get paid a lot of money to, to do that, you know, like (laughs) that's their job is to scout and, and know how these hitters are. And a lot of them, they've been behind the plate for hundreds of at bats with these guys. So um, I definitely found myself trusting the catcher more up there and also, I think it was a little more freeing, like in a in a rookie situation, knowing that like it it if I shake to something and make a mistake, it's on me. Whereas like if I go along with the catcher, you know, we we can be on this together, kind of mm. deal. Mike, what a great conversation we had with Davis, Daniel. And there's so many things that stood out to me in this first part of the conversation that we got to have with him. But overall, just a a really impressive guy and makes me want to root for him even more in this upcoming season. Because again, like I mentioned, we were really impressed with what he brought to the table. But then hearing him, how he works and, Mm. and the things that he's working on, and then just his impressive outing, in the, in the Arizona fall league, it gives us a lot to look forward to, right? Yeah. I, I really was impressed with him and very, very down to earth guy and, and very humble when he talked with us, even off the air, super humble as he talked about his dog and his wife, he didn't talk about him in that order. He talked about his wife and then his dog, <laughs> but just a super, super humble guy. It was cool to hear a little bit about his, his debut in segment one, John, and escaping the jam that mm-hmm. he was in. I, I love that. I also love that he talked a bit about being a pitcher that attacks the zone, man. And that's something you and I've talked about. That fired me up. Yeah. Yeah, That fired me up because we have needed that so bad. And, and somebody who attacks the zone and and is able to get away with good pitches in the zone. And again, pitch efficiency, Mike, I think that that is what that points to. 
Yeah, and he did say that being a starter in the minors helped him to get there and be somebody that attacks the zone. And I, and I love the idea of of what he shared about his his routine, his mindset and skill. And and that quote that he said, everyone has skill mm-hmm. in the majors, right? And so sometimes we can like, how is it? Are you nervous? Are you scared? And he's like, well, everybody's got the skill. That's why they made it here. And so I love that conversation from segment one. And then segment two, Johnny, talking about the nerves in his debut, but he knew where everything was. He, he had a chance to go through his normal routine and and that's really important for every pitcher according to Davis. Yeah, I was actually I was happy that I brought up that conversation about striking out Brent Rooker. Yeah. Because he said, "Yeah, the the fact that that was when my curveball started to feel good." And then he took that into the Arizona Fall League just to work on that a little bit more. But again, what a good guy who's who's working hard. And really trying to make it like he he wants to be in that rotation. He's he wants to be part of this team in 2024. But the biggest thing is getting those innings behind him, building yeah. up his case for being a starter and and getting consistency. And then, Mike, what I really appreciated was the fact that uh, he he was talking about building confidence and in, in throwing strikes and getting his location down and pitches. But then also. This guy, even though he's in the uh, Angels minor league system and, you know, we don't really know much about it unless you're in it. And, yeah. and he's, he said that he took advantage of everything that was offered to him from yep. the coaches and conversations and the data and the machinery they have. Uh, but then the, the biggest thing, I think, is that relationship with the pitchers and catchers, right? Yeah. What was it? What was his quote? Uh, why'd you throw that pitch? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we get into the dugout and I think that that's part of what we miss as fans sometimes is the humanity mm-hmm. in these players, right? We know they're humans. We know they're real people. They have real lives, but the truth is, is that there is some of those questions that they get asked in games and they're not always going to be on their a game. And that's what makes those really special players really special because they're able to stay focused. And I did love to your point about the angels minor league system. We, we often hear about how this system is terrible and how it's not great and how these guys aren't developing. But Davis has said, like, I'm just taking advantage of all of the people that I have around me. Right. And I'm really thankful that they have taken some time to invest in me. And according to Davis, he's really become the pitcher that he is because he's been in the developmental system with the angels. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even, you know, getting drafted and then not playing in 2020 and then coming back in 2021 and working through injury and whatnot, boy, it's it's just really good. Like he's a good guy that I think is going to make a good impact on this team. Mike, where do you see him in 2024? I know he said he wants to make the, uh, the rotation maybe in spring training. That's a, that's a possibility. Yeah, I I think in spring training, we're going to see him start for sure. I'm just trying to think of what happens to who you have there now, because I do believe that Silseth is going to be in this rotation, definitely barring injury or something, you know, dramatic. I think Detmers is going to be in there. I think Sandoval is going to be in there. I think Canning is going to be in there. And so there's there's four. And then you got Tyler Anderson. Now, depending on if the Angels go and get a big arm which all indications are that they are going to go get a big arm. Aaron Nola's off the table. We know Mm -hmm. that, but there's still some big arms out there. Yamamoto's out there and some other pitchers like Blake Snell. And so we'll see what the angels do, but I think that Davis could be somebody that could fill in uh, a la like Kenny Rosenberg, or Mm -hmm. maybe even a Jose Suarez at this point, Johnny, I'm more confident in Davis Daniel and maybe a bit biased because we talked to him than I am with Jose Suarez because oh, we've sure. seen Davis be a bit more consistent and Suarez has just been so inconsistent and we're not sure what we're going to get when he steps into the rotation or even when he steps into the bullpen. And so I think that if you're going to use Suarez, you put him in the bullpen because that's where he's thrived in the past. Yeah. And I think Davis Daniel can be somebody that proved last year that he could start for you or he could eat up a couple of innings for you. He could even end the game if you need him to end the game for you. Well, here's here's what I think is uh, reassuring as Angel fans. You know this guy is putting in the work. Yes. And, and sometimes I feel like, I, I understand everybody works hard. Everybody's like doing their thing and trying to get better. But the way he's working on his pitches, I mean, being able to throw to righties and lefties effectively, yeah. right? And also... Going for, he said he races to two strikes, and I love that. And and we've noticed that, like we just need guys who attack the zone. It yeah. really, it really shows a departure between what's ha- what's gone on in the minors versus the majors. And I think that if the mindset can be kind of where Davis Daniel has been and learned from and growing, I think that's why he was 
so effective in in the times that we got to see him towards the end of the season. So yeah, uh, again, it's it's reassuring to me to know that he's working hard. These are the things that he's working on, and it's all stuff that we've been clamoring for. Not just you right. and me, but like Angel right. fans have been clamoring for. And so it, it's just really reassuring to hear it right from Davis Daniel that those are the things that matter to him. That's how he wants to get better, and I hope he can bring that in 2024. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Hey, every day yours, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts like us from Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and you'll be a part of the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. Hey, give us a follow at locked on angels on Twitter and at super halo bros on Twitter and Instagram. It's the best place to connect with us. You can also connect with us, whether you're listening or watching, head on over to YouTube, find today's show. Let us know what you think about part one of our conversation with Davis Daniel. Did anything stand out to you as well? Did, did anything sound reassuring to you? Like it did for me because it certainly gave me some reassurance that he's working hard and he wants to make an impact. Mike, uh, we continue our conversation with Davis Daniel tomorrow, and and we actually got to ask him some intriguing questions. What is coming up on tomorrow's show with Davis? Yeah, we asked Davis uh, about being around Trout and about being around Otani, and his answer was great. And he also uh, talked a little bit about what it was like, because remember, Ohapi was watching the Twins celebrate when they won the division. We asked him what that was like, and it was interesting to get his thoughts. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow with Davis on Lockdown Angels. You know what I'm looking forward to is the conversation around the coaching that's yes. helped him yes. through his career. And there's a couple names in there that'll stand out to us. And you'll find out what we're talking about on tomorrow's show. We hope you'll come back and join us for part two of inter- of the interview with Davis Daniel. Until then, my name is John and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us. And we'll see you back here on Tuesday for part two with Davis Daniel. Johnny, I met locked on every day or Landon Crouch yesterday. Hey. Super excited about that. There you go. Love Good being dude. locked on every day or Good dude.